So, the box finally came. Ouch. This is the box that has the, uh, the new electric box for the wrong kind, the kind for inserting into drywall. This is the kind for new construction. So I'm gonna open it up. There's a hundred in here. I only need 12. So, uh, but I got enough. <laughs> work light, work light. By the way, these things are awful. I mean, they provide light, it's great, but the clamp on them is so weak. It cannot hang on to anything. With a light bulb in it, it's too much weight. I hate them. I mean, I don't hate them. You know what my father used to say? Save your hate for sin. Okay, I really don't like them at all. So if you've been following my channel, um, you know that I put these up I taped these up in uh, temporary locations so I could kind of estimate where I want things to go, the switches and the outlets. And that was two weeks ago. And in the heat, the tape came loose, of course, and they all fell to the ground. But not a big deal. But these are the wrong kind. And so I ordered different ones. Let me show you. These boxes have little flaps that come up so you can put them in drywall and then tighten that up and hold it fast to the drywall. Wrong for my project. These are the boxes I needed. The kind with uh, nail, no, look, I, I'm so happy they came with nails pre-installed. So um, you put these up next to the stud and you hammer them in and then they don't move forever. And that's what I'm installing today. So now I have taken off 12 boxes and I just had a thought. You know, every once in a while I have a thought. You ever have a thought? It's so exciting. The, <coughs> the box I bought, <coughs> the box I bought has 100 of the correct kind, this kind. So I'm not limited to 12. I could do more than 12. I might do more than 12. Hmm, we'll see how it goes. Now these uh, electrical boxes have a little pin right there on the outside. That's the side that goes against the stud, right? Those are half an inch so that you can line that right up with the edge of the stud for half an inch of drywall. However, for um, the studio environment, I'm planning on doing two layers of drywall. So I said, well, I gotta double that. I gotta make it stick out an inch. Well, you can't make it stick out a full inch because then the, then the nails won't be able to uh, make purchase into the stud. So I'm bringing it out as much as I can and so that the nails still have um, meat to pound themselves into. So um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to cut the drywall, maybe. I mean, I the as far as I know, I'm not an electrician, but as far as I know, the outlet itself has to be fully in this box to be safe, right? To match, to be code um, compliant. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh man, I would have to choose one that goes left-handed, shoot. Okay, so this normally would sit here, but I'm pulling it out to here. So that should allow about an inch. But you can see it's barely going in. No, you can't see. 
see it's uh, barely going in from the ed edge of the stud in. Huh. All right, let's do the bottom. Gotta make sure and hold this level. Hold it straight. I hit the camera with the hammer. Oh my goodness. It's okay, my cell phone screen's already cracked. Isn't yours? All right, so it's in there nice and tight. And if you look from this side, excuse me, if you look from this side, you can see that that's an inch, a little less than an inch. Oh, it's not quite perfectly, but that's really close to an inch. Okay, great. Anyway, um, this is the door, right? Okay. So right by the door, I have two switches. I'm gonna have one switch for to go up to all the lights, and this one will go down. So let's trace them one at a time. Okay, so this light, this will be a switch that'll go to this outlet up there, and that's the, that's the wall, the top of the wall right there, so it's close to the top. Uh, this one there, which will also go to this one up here which will go, I'm gonna trip on something, to this one up here, which will go to this one up here. So there's one at the top of each wall, in roughly in the center. So those outlets along the top will, um, I don't know what, what I'm gonna do for lighting in here. I, I do have a set of patio lights that are about 12 feet. So my plan is to plug them in and have them hanging kind of as ambient light to start with. I have a ratty tatty piece of uh, bathroom lighting fixture. This, this bathroom fixture I got really cheap because, um, see the, there's a finial at that end but there's no finial at this end. The box is a little dinged up, but not on the face of it. So anyway, I got this really cheap. There are four lights. Okay, so originally I, th I was thinking I would put it up here above the control desk. That's what's gonna go uh, under the window here. By the way, I still think I'm gonna fill that window in. Um, but then I thought maybe I should put it over there this is the uh, recording end, and that's the YouTube studio side. So maybe I'll put it over there. I haven't decided yet. But that's one of the reasons I put boxes at the top of all the... Oh my goodness. That one should go right there, which is kind of centered over the door. Oh, I gotta, oof. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add one. Right now, right now. Now that I'm up here thinking about it, I don't think I'm going to add another box up here above the door. I think what I'll do is when I put the wires up, I'll bring some wire down here and like two feet or three feet of wire and just have it in here and available if in the future I punch through and want to put something here. A fixture that's what I'll do back here by the door door handle this switch goes to the upper which are going to be used primarily for lights this switch is going to go to all of the outlets so it's going to drop to an outlet right here I put all the outlets at the bottom of the outlet is um, three feet off the floor so you don't have to bend over us you know Old folks appreciate not having to bend over if we don't have to. So anyway, I thought maybe I would put a little shelf here where people could, you know, they could plug in their phones and set them on a shelf while they're working and they could charge. Anyway, or night, put a night light there. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So switch goes to here, which then goes to here. And this is placed for the right 
monitor speaker because the monitors are powered. Then there's one here. This one is centered for the laptop, you know, computer, um, the monitor and whatever else peripheral stuff might uh, be plugged in there. Then there's one over here for the left channel monitor speaker. And, you know, outlets have two input. So one can be for speakers and one can be for other things in the area. Same thing over there. So there's these three. Then centered, approximately centered on this wall, three feet up off the floor is another one. And then I put one here. Now I'm standing on the recording side, the YouTube side, studio side. So I, I'm going to have, you know, possibly the plan is to put a bookcase in here. So I didn't want to have this behind the bookcase, but I wanted it accessible for, you know, if somebody's recording here and they, they want to plug in uh, a preamp, you know, for the microphone or they want to plug in their keyboard or drum machine or whatever they can plug in. Then I have one. Remember the bricks? Watch one of my older videos to, to figure out what the heck. Okay, so I put one here, which is approximately center on the wall, which will sit, again, 36 inches off the floor, but it's it gives room for the bookcase over there and bookcase over here. And then, oh, look at that. It's 48 degrees in here. And then I have one over here, which is, this is the door. There's a window here. And there'll be one there too. And this again, I think I'll put a shelf above it so people can plug in their phones and charge them while they're in here working. And those will all be on this switch right here. So whenever I leave, I just hit, hit that and that turns everything off, everything electrical poof, off. And then this one um, turns off the lights, whatever or whatever's plugged in up above. So that's what's going on in here. That's what's happening. Um, I'm excited to be working on this project. This is the kind of the culmination so far of a lifelong dream. I have uh, been involved in recording audio music since I was in high school. So I've been in and out of studios, not as much as some of you, but more than most of you. How about that? <laughs> So anyway, um, having a recording studio of my own is a culmination of a dream from decades past, 40 years or more, um, 40 plus years. So I know I can't afford to hire somebody to do it and I can't afford to do super great top of the line materials, but I'm doing what I can and I'm doing it just step by step and I hope to be up and running by May 2021. That's my goal for my birthday. And uh, the lesson here, uh, for those of you that might be watching, all three of you, um, the lesson here is, number one, don't give up on a dream. If you have a dream, hang on to it. Because uh, time may open doors where you can fulfill that dream. Number two, you don't have to spend a heck of a lot of money and get premium stuff. Just do the best you can with what you've got. And I've rambled on and on long enough. I'm going to hang up now. See you in the next video.